In this video, we're gonna show you how we built our first floor from start to finish. We added these steel beams to the existing crawl space and foundation in order to support the weight of the new house. We began by installing the four corners of rim boards around the outer edges of the foundation in order to set the exterior edges of the new floor. We had this nailer plate installed on top of the steel beam in order to have something for the new wood eye joist to nail to and a sill plate that is pressure treated to separate the new floor from the existing concrete foundation. This was our temporary outdoor laundry facilities to get us through. A critical part of establishing the first floor was making sure that the corners of the new house were square. So in order to do this we utilized a standard framing technique of stringing around the four corners of the house and this is how you check that each corner was square. The long distance of the house was just under 64 feet and we bought this skill saw in order to cut the new wood eye joist for the subfloor. Here you can see the blocking that we had to add in the last bay here and then we began cutting more joists for the subfloor. So first we began by marking out the length that we needed to cut and then using a square we made a line to show where we needed to cut with the new skill saw. We added this little piece of rim board extra piece in order to create a level surface to utilize the skill saw and cut the length of the joist. So one of the challenges that we ran into was that the skill saw was not deep enough in order to cut the flange on each end so we had to make some extra cuts in order to cut the joist to length and that you, you can see here uh, cutting the other side of the flange that didn't get cut with the initial cut. Here you can see from another angle the same method that we used with the skill saw in order to cut each of our joists. Uh, we had quite a few joists to cut with a full 64 length house and each joist is at 16 inches on center which is pretty standard for floor joist construction. As you can see it's not all work and no play at the job site as anything is a toy for my toddler. Moving on to placing the joists across the subfloor we begin by working our way from the outer edges to the sections of the house where we had some cantilever sections. So these went from edge of foundation to edge of foundation here at this end of the house. And so we started by placing those first, uh, one at a time, approximately into the locations that they went. And then we went to the other end of the house and did the same thing by placing each joist approximately where it needed to go so that they were about 16 inch on center just to get them in place before we nail them to the rim boards. So here you can see we are nailing the top flange. We have two nails going in, two framing nails, um, based on what's structural uh, required and two at the bottom of the flange. And here you can see lifting into place the specific location for each wood joist. Uh, one of the things that we had to do was make sure that the top of the joist was flush with the top of the rim board. And so we utilized shims in order to achieve this. So you can see here, he's adjusting the wood eye joist so that it is in place with the mark that we have on the top of the rim board for where six inch on center is and then he's utilizing these shims to lift up this piece um, because the foundation itself isn't perfectly level so this helps us achieve a level subfloor on the top and making sure that the top of each wood eye joist is flush with the top of the rim board which will make our floor more level and an easier install for our uh, subfloor that will be going on top of this so here again he's named in two nails at the top flange. Um, he's making sure that everything's in line first and then he will proceed with adding two nails to the bottom flange to nail this side of the new joist in place. Here you can see a little close-up of adding the shims and he's showing you here how he marked off on the rim board that edge of the joist needs to be flush with his mark on the rim board and that's how we ensure that each joist is spaced 
spaced evenly at 16 inch on center. So this is a standard um, spacing for wood eye joists and most joists uh, because your subfloor are usually four by eight sheets and this helps you achieve a standard nailing pattern for your subfloor uh, without having to add any sort of extra blocking or backing for your subfloor nailing. So this makes it easier for installing the subfloor if you have 16 inch on centers. So that's what we did for this house as well. So this is just verifying that each joist is plumb vertically and in line with where it needs to go for an easy subfloor install. Here you can see we get some pretty great views and sunsets in uh, Big Sky Country, you could call it, of Colorado. And seeing some of the joists go in and then we finished putting in all of our joists, at least placing them after we cut them. So the next step, we have these two foot cantilever sections on both sides of the house. And so we needed to extend the rim board and then the joists out two feet over the foundation. And so you can see here, he's getting the piece of rim board level so that it's flush and extending out two feet, cantilevering over the foundation and nailing that into place. And once we have that in place, we are will be able to install and nail in the joists for the cantilevered sections of our floor. So you can see here the nailing pattern we use. He's double checking that everything is flush. And there you have the full rim board at the front cantilever section of the house in place. And then with that in place, we can mark off every 16 inch on center and start nailing in our joists. So here on the other side of the house, we have the same condition where we're putting in the rim board. This is actually a section between two cantilevered sections of the house. So he wants to get this in place first. Um, as you can see, one of the challenges that you run into with any sort of um, natural material or wood construction is that joists are not always straight and the challenge here is he's trying to get it in the right location, nail it in so that he can then straighten out the joist, which has a pretty significant twist into it. So he's trying to <laughs> keep things in line with that rim board at the outer face of the sill plate that's on top of the foundation and get this nailed into place. So here you can see just how twisted and warped um, those joists can be. So he's marking off every 16 inch on center. So we have a line and a marker for placing each of our joists to ensure that we have even spacing all the way across our floor and lifting each piece into place. But you can see here one of the things that we ran into is the bolt that nails the sill plate down into the foundation was right where a joist needed to be. So we ended up having to notch out a little bit in order for that joist to sit flush on top of the sill plate. And here we're nailing in those joists now moving along it feels like progress is going well on this new floor which is very exciting and there you have it we have this front section of the rim board in and the joists nailed in on this side and as you can see underneath here we have um, the cantilevered section where we will need to be placing uh, CDX rated plywood exterior rated plywood on the underside of that and moving along to this side of the house over here you can see we have blocking in this last bay outer edge uh, between joists and we'll have to have some in the second row as well. One of the other things we had to do was add these double joists um, at each of the areas where the cantilever started. So on each side of the house. So there were areas that we actually had extra joists uh, per our structural engineer requirement. So here you can see he's nailing in the eye joist at the rim board of a two feet cantilever section and so he nails in along the top flange uh, all the way back along the rim board to keep that in place and then here is a cantilevered section where we have our joists in place and we are chalking out the line for where those will need to be cut because they're only cantilevering two feet over so here he is cutting those extra ends off which we will then utilize for blocking between our joists here you can 
can see he is using a square to make sure that each side of this cantilevered section is square at 90 degree angles and using clamps to lift into place the rim board for this cantilevered section, double checking that we're all square in the corner and making sure it, nothing is out of skew so that we can get this cantilevered section in the right location, which will make subfloor and eventually framing much easier on the house. And so once we know that it's square, we will nail in the new rim board on this section of the cantilever. And that's what he is beginning to do here is getting that rim board nailed in. And then we will be able to mark out the locations across this section uh, for the joists and place those in the right location at 16 inch on centers and get those nailed in. And once we do that at every cantilever section of the house, we will have all our joists in place and can move on to blocking and eventually the subfloor after that. As I mentioned before, we were using these extra ends of the wood eye joist to put as blocking in between the joists. So structurally, we were required to put blocking between each joist all along the house from um, the middle, along the middle, and then between the middle and each side as well. And at the ends of the house, the first two bays on either end of the house needed a specific amount of blocking uh, per the structural engineer. Here's our columns that have arrived. We have the steel round columns that will be going in to hold the beams that will be supporting the second floor. And these shorter columns will be going underneath the steel beam that is in the crawl space to hold that up. So we've started putting on a little bit of subfloor here where we've got some blocking in place. And here you can see we have some blocking at the outer edge at the rim board, which is required per structural. So we have that in place. As we proceeded with our floor, we also needed to get these steel columns in place so that we could put the subfloor around them. So here you can see we're using the boom truck with crane that we purchased and that's holding up the steel column as he gets that aligned into the location it goes. You can see we've got our double column over here in place already. So this column will actually be holding a 24 inch beam here and that will be spanning over the kitchen, living, dining room area for a big open plan. Here you can see he is putting in the blocking that is required per structural. So as we get the blocking in place, we can then move on to subfloor. And here we are with the subfloor. So we have these extra ends that were left over from the portion that went on the cantilever. So we're gonna salvage those and use that on the other side um, so that we could be as efficient as possible with our three quarter inch tongue and groove subfloor. So he's just cutting off some extra ends there so that we have the cantilevers in place. So there you have it, the subfloor for the first floor is all complete. All of our decking, our sheathing is on top. The rim boards are in place, the joists, the blocking. Um, the only thing not yet in is the columns due to a delay from the manufacturer who did not make them correctly. So now that you have it there, we have a subfloor. So subscribe if you'd like to see more of our DIY home build and we'd be happy to have you follow along as we continue building our custom home.